All right. What's up, everybody? So I already had a comment here. Someone said that this music makes them want to go buy the missus some flowers. Uh, that's a little weird. I don't know how that... Like, that music makes me want to, like, kick a table over. Not buy flowers, but whatever. Uh, anyways... I think we have are on episode number eleven now, right? Eleven? No, nobody knows. Only me. I don't even know. But I've got a special guest tonight. I already hear them back there making all kinds of noise. Um, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Music makes one tear shit up. But Bobby Ducati, Ducati, Ducaki, whatever. Where are you at? Tear shit up with his music, son. <laughs> what are you doing with the boxes? I don't know. That music made me want to just tear shit up. Okay. Are you standing up for this entire thing? How long is this entire thing? i never done one of these before. Oh, man. It's a couple of hours. Oh, my God. All right. A couple hours. Oh, you're drinking a Corona and everything. Look at you. Yeah. You didn't get the memo. You're supposed to drink alcohol. I did not get the memo. Man. Well, I told I Pops. You know that Pops back there? I told Pops to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, pop makes people decisions when I don't drink. I mean, whatever. Okay, all right. Well, uh, what do you got going on back there? There's a lot of noise, and they're not working on your Man, car. I, got, so I can see your car. I got Corey Moonshine back here putting a uh, lift in the shop. You know, there's lift ain't that old. I mean, the shop ain't that old, so we're still putting together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Before, before we go too far, hold on. I done, I done seen a damn comment about grandpa's necklace. All right. This, this was my grandfather's necklace. I don't like the, the grandpa jokes about necklace so good. Just cut that bullshit out. All right. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, so that's the same guy that you tried to fight at PRI. You remember that? Really? Yeah. Do you remember in, in the bar when you said something about your necklace and you were ready to fight him over it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's the same guy. Right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see Juan's over there. Juan's already got the, the face palm. Uh, they face gone. palm face. They be Juan. Motor, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. That's, that's something we Bobby. should do, like they said right there. We should do another demolition derby. We should do that. We should. Man, you should use that car behind you. Man. That's your daddy right now. <laughs> yeah, I can't say nothing. I can't say nothing. Last time your car raced my car, you won. That's right. You know. I can't. I can't say that either though, because you wasn't in it. So I mean, it don't really count. Yeah, that's right. It don't count. Someone else was driving my shit. That, that's, that's only right. half a win, right? That's that's a, yeah. We're gonna give it. Uh, we're gonna give it half. We're gonna give it half there. But uh, that height wise. Anyway, well, I mean. Half to me, half to Birdman. Actually, I should get more because I still put the tune up in. So, you know. Hell yeah. Good. So what's up? No, man, I'm asking you the same thing. So, uh, you know, last night was Mega Cash Days and OG 405. You watched the OG show? I didn't have a chance to watch any of it, man. I'm trying to get the car ready and this thing's kicking my ass. We haven't motor one – State transmission, everything one state. I mean, we just we've been busting ass, so I really have time. I haven't had time to watch it. So what I heard you say is you don't support the OG show. No, I definitely do. I mean, shit, you know, man, you've been friends before any of the shows, and I'm like, hey, like I told you, I was a fan before I even started racing on TV. I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. Uh, yeah. So the Mega Cast Day show was last night. So you didn't watch that either, I take it. I, I did not have a chance to. I, I, we didn't get out of the shop until 3 o'clock this morning. What the f This is some bullshit. I'm trying to get this dragon bitch ready. What are you getting ready for? Uh, you know, everybody sees it on Facebook. We're heading back to shithole Vegas to go uh, film another episode, series, or season, whatever the hell you want to call it. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All right. Can't so you're heading back yet. to Vegas. Yeah. No, you yes. need to I got you. So real quick, Bobby, we're going to talk a little bit about you. And hopefully, Corey, 
Well, quit banging shit around on purpose back there. Oh, hey, Chris, bliss. I hope you quit banging shit around on purpose real quick. Daddy can't help. Thank you. Man, what kind of lift y'all putting in there? You already have a lift. We got a Ben Pack 2 post and a Ben Pack 4 post over here. Got one. A 4 post. <laughs> okay. All right. You, have all the lift. you know, I'm fat, dude. Sounds I'm lazy. Good. I can't be getting up and off the ground. Yeah. Well, you're standing up, though. You're going to stand up for this whole thing. I'm going to carry this thing out, make you just stand there for just hours and hours. I'm sitting my fat ass down. That's what I would do. That's definitely what I would do. Hey, hey I'll fuck around let the car down and go to sleep in there. Yeah, you won't. Probably not. Yeah, probably I wouldn't do that. So, tell me, why do they call you Little Legend? Well... A lot of people don't know, um, like you, you've had the chance to meet him, but uh, Greg Brown, you know, it's like my pops, he, uh, he's never been beat on the street, you know, since I was a kid, and as time went on, Greg got a little older, I got a little older, I was able to legally drive, um, you know. When I was 12, 13 years old, I was sneaking out the house, going to them street racing, you know, in Louisiana, um, watching him race. And everybody called him the legend because nobody, nobody's beat him on the street. That's where he got his name from. Well, as I got older, I started stealing his car when he went on dates with females. And I started racing his car unknowing to him. And, um, I, I talked shit to the wrong person one night, and uh, we wound up locking a race in on Highway 13 out here in the middle of BFE where we live. I got out there, a little S10 with a blower motor in it, done my burnout, backed up, started purging the nitrous, and Greg opened the door. They pretty much set me up. And uh, he said, boy, what in the fuck are you doing? I said, oh, shit. I just killed the car. And... Uh, <laughs> He looked at me. He said, no. Nah. He said, crank this motherfucker back up. If you're going to start, he said, if you're going to do this shit, we're going to do it the right way. He said, now kick his ass and shut the door. And ever since that night, you know, I run somebody in his car and everybody started calling me Little Legend. And it just kind of went from there. And, you know, that, that's kind of where that nickname came from. It's from when I was, you know, 19 years old. Yeah. Okay. So, I think most people know have known you for having a Maverick, right? I think yes, that's what you started started on the show was with the Maverick. So you don't have it anymore, right? No, uh, I actually you got a picture of that on there. Uh, a girl named Nikki. Yeah, po- um, Floyd. Yeah, show the picture of the Maverick. This is now the Bobby. owner of the Maverick. That's not you, Bobby. No, she looks a little prettier than I do, and she's way smaller. I mean, I'm fat. But that is the new owner of the Maverick. I no longer have it. I have not had it in about three and a half years. Um, She's actually raising it. The kumquat I sold it to uh, in Houston, uh, Matthew Slobber, nuts, whatever. Um, he bought it. I've never done nothing with it. And, Pretty much used it to try to be friends with everybody, and nobody even liked it. Sold it to another cat. Uh, Nikki and her old man ended up with it, and now she's actually racing it. So I give my hat off to her. Car's got a little more power than I ever had, so you know I hope I'm the best with it. I think she's taller than you. She is taller than me, so I really don't know how the hell she fits in there. <laughs> I mean, just okay. being real. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, real quick, uh, the next question I saw over here in the comment section was, uh, why do you always beat up old guys? I don't beat up old guys. Jesus Christ. Dude. Um, dude. You would I, say bullshit. You would ask bullshit. No, bullshit, dude. Uh, A, the AARP has already called me and said they're filing lawsuits against you because you're beating up all their members. So, I don't want to hear that shit. Well, You've been beating up well, old let people. me tell you this. They just they just sue me. Let me tell you something. Suing me is like trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip. You know what I'm saying? So if they sue me for what I got is nothing. They gonna get nothing. So fuck them. 
Well, when you keep saying that, they're going to get that nice transmission behind you and that new lift. That's actually all my mama's name, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Every really, like, why, why you got to beat up my Birdman? Mama, man. <laughs> why you got to beat up James Finney and Larry Larson? Man, why you, why you got to beat up Chuck? Why you got to beat up Chuck? I didn't. I didn't. Huh? I did. Yeah, you did. Everybody seen y'all doing that little fight. rock 'em sock 'em. That was a that was a pillow fight. Everybody Man, knows that's no. a pillow fight. Corey, shut the fuck up. No, I'm playing. So, any grown man that gets into a heated argument with another grown man and grabs you by the throat, if you any kind of a man, shit's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, me and Birdman both look past that. We both laugh about it today. I talk to him all the time. We send each other screenshots of y'all crazy ass fans sending each other or sending us stuff talking about they gonna kill Birdman or they gonna kill me. We laugh about it. So keep it coming. <laughs> yeah. So Larry then, Larson, fuck that dude. Oh wow. It's like that. Dude, you fought him, he had a helmet nah. on. Exactly. Like what kind of pussy fights with a helmet on? <laughs> That's the Get kind of pussy that knows. That, that's the kind of pussy that knows I just fucked up. <laughs> Leaves his helmet on. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, did you like? Like, I didn't really see the video. So, did you like punch him in the helmet, or how's that work? You raise his visor up and punch him through the visor, or what? I was trying to break through the visor. Okay. Um, man, I okay. really. I, I'm gonna go tell you. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna not talk shit about Larry. Cause I'm gonna be honest. I, when we was at the race, Larry said, "If you jump, we're fighting on the other end." And all I could think was bullshit. You know, this dude ain't serious. And uh, he kept telling it and telling it and telling it. And Jeff Lutz goes, "Man, I think he's fucking serious." And uh, man, we got the other end. You know, I, I guessed on the light, and like he told me, if I did, if I guessed and beat him. That we would fight. So I guess the light turned green. I was excited the whole way down. We got the other end, and Scott Taylor slapped on the hood. I'm like jerking still and like, yeah, I just beat this motherfucker. And Scott's on the hood going, he he, he wants to fight. I said, shit. So I got out the car. <laughs> and I didn't think, you know, dude's got his helmet on, all that shit. He come over there. I said, man, I said, you really want to do this? And he tried to grab me, like. You know, so I said, all right, get bing, bing, spools in. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah. And then everybody I mean, wants to call me a pussy for kicking him. Well, let me tell you this. First off, the only pussy in the fight had the helmet on. The okay. other only pussy in the fight had a fucking Hans device still on. So, yeah, I kicked the shit out of him. And <laughs> just, like the picture, just like the picture you posted, you know, about – we're going to have Bobby on the night with me and my arms up with this to Larry. That was the next week in Florida. I say, motherfucker, we just drew each other again. You want to go ahead and fight right here while you ain't got no helmet on and be a man? They didn't want to do that. Well, it's because you kicked him in the stomach. You probably broke his rib. Well, I had a plan. If I if I raced him again, I was going to get out of the car with my helmet, too. But it wasn't going to be on my head. I was going to wrap him with that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> So he I'll tried to fight you with the with Hans device on too. Okay. That dude had a Hans device on, a kidney belt, a helmet, his fucking little snow boots, because shit ain't even that damn fast. Um, all kind of stuff. I mean, let, let's be real. I mean, we laugh about it now, but that day in time and about for a month after that, I wanted to kill him. Yeah, you're pretty mad. So I was very mad. Like, it, it, the the more of it hurt my feelings because I looked up to that dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that that's a shitty way to think about it, but I'm the I'm one of the youngest people on No Prep Kings. You know, so naturally I looked up to all y'all. You know, and especially him. Like, you know, he done big things in his life. Yeah. So, the burning question is, who's the next old guy that you're gonna fight? And uh, my I, I think the poll winner right now might be Monza or Jeff Lutz. So 
Uh, I love I love both of them, so it wouldn't be neither one of those. I have okay. the utmost respect for Jeff Lutz. I have the utmost respect for Monza. Um, th- them are two people I could call right now and say, I got a flat tire six hours away from your house, and they're on the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that would I guess, happen. Uh, I guess uh, since that, you know, I mean, I know they meet the, uh, the age criteria, um, but since they're your friends, like, I mean, who's who's on your radar? I mean, who's next? Who is who is in line to get the two piece combo? Uh, hold the fries. Like, who who's 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 next? Probably this girl named Chrissy Hamilton. No, I'm playing. <laughs> All right. Um, no, uh, man. Honestly, I thought about starting shit with X Man just to see if uh, you know everybody shut the <laughs> fuck up, but I only beat up on old people. So you heard it here first. Bobby is going to fight Axeman. Um, that's, that is, that is some breaking news. You heard it here first <laughs> uh, on this show. Bobby has called have, out Larry Axeman and his 24 inch biceps to fight. That's amazing. That is wow. bullshit. I did not say Bobby, that. I can't, I can't bet on you on this one. I just can't do it. But, I, you know, no, usually actually, I'll ride with you. No, let me tell you what really was going to happen. This was actually in the works. So we got a boy, a buddy of mine, Nick, uh, Nathan over here. He owns a production called Hub City Beatdown. <laughs> they was going to hook it up to where me and Chuck, Sight Singer, um, got in a cage over here together. And, you know, me and Chuck was all kind of down for that, but, uh, Production guy that other says though. So why why did that not go down? Like what I thought y'all were what happened with all that? Ah uh, man. It, we just we just got told it wasn't really good publicity. We were trying to get paid though, you know what I mean? Like we was gonna get paid. We was gonna get paid to beat the show each other. Yeah. That'd have been awesome. Okay, but That's right I think I understand. I think I understand uh, what you're saying now. <clears throat> Outside forces prevented that from happening, is what you're saying. Right. Got it. They said it'd be the I'm wrong kind of publicity. Yeah. So I'm mean, respect that. That might be something you do. Uh, maybe when Street Outlaws doesn't isn't around no more, might be a better time to do that. Hey, we were just trying to make some money. That's it. Right. You know. Well, so Chuck is so Chuck's on your list. It sounds like um, no, nobody's on my list. I heard that too. I don't have a list. So now, Axeman and Chuck, are you gonna are you gonna smoke a gonna smoke a square real quick? Okay, all right. Look, Let's see. I might light a I've cigarette. Heard, I might light. Never mind. I've heard that uh, a cigarette tells a lot about a person. What kind of cigarettes you smoke, Bobby? Menthols, slim, nope. extra slim. <laughs> uh, Winston's, Winston Salem's, Virginia Marble Slims. Line, baby. Okay, all right. The well, Rocky said I don't add block to Bobby's list. Who? He said add block to Bobby's list. Oh, you gonna beat up block too? That's my son. Your son? Block and Dennis Bailey's both my boys. Just my kids. Shut the fuck up. Dennis Bailey is your dad. I don't want to hear that. No, nah, we one in one right now. I whooped his ass, that old raggedy ass Maverick gets this $200,000 car, so I ain't worried about it. Man, you need to. I feel like that dude is literally seconds away from falling asleep. Every episode, I feel like he just woke up from a nap and is ready to go he back to sleep. He's got a natural high version of Mr. Clean. Of what? He's the natural high version of Mr. Clean. Okay. <laughs> so, tell me about some filming you've been doing. Some other filming. Some filming I've been doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> they haven't said that, but... Oh, someone called him. Now Bobby's going to be muted because somebody called him. See, now, Bobby, you're going to have to call back in because someone called you. 
you didn't have your phone on do not disturb and now someone called you and fucked this all up call back in bobby call back in and while you call him back in i'm gonna go and read some comments <laughs> how tipsy was dennis bailey in last night's episode you know uh i don't know if you ask him he says he doesn't drink but he always had a cup in his hand uh, on nights he wasn't racing, so I'd say he was pretty well ripped uh, just based on some of the things he was saying <clears throat> on last night's episode. But, you know, that uh, – I'd be honest with you, during this filming, like some of the guys that weren't racing, on the nights they weren't racing, they were definitely partaking in a drink and getting a little, uh, a little drunky drunk. Bobby, you're back. I turned on Do Not Disturb. That's a good idea. Sorry, that didn't know the first time. I'm a virgin. Excuse me, you're a what? <laughs> yeah, a uh, virgin, at, you know, this shit. Oh, okay. All right. It sounds like the uh, ice cream man is in the background of your shop. What is going on? That is oh, my, man. that's my boy, David Day's ringtone. All right. You need to have a shop meeting right now and just have them mute their phones, especially the ice cream man phone. Mute them. Uh, man, you never heard Magic Boy. Reed ice cream man? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it sounded like the ice cream man was calling. Mr. Ice Cream Man. Oh, you're dancing for us now. Go ahead. Give us a little dance. Give us a little dance. Come on. No, I'm good. Just do this, it. This 250 pounds gets to move, and it's like bad news, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I used to be a stripper. Oh, uh, 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 really? Let's see your move there, then. Come on, show us that. They call, they call me Fat Lavender. Show us that move. No, I'm good. Come on, do it real quick. What you were going to do? No, no. Oh, now you're not going to do it. You're getting shy. You're shy on the camera. Man, I thought Bobby right, was right. a guy that could do whatever. Pop, pop, do the broke back pop. Come on. They got the broke back pop. Come on, bro. The, bro <laughs> the broke back pop? Ain't no pop with a broke back. My brother's crippled. Man, don't make fun of pops like that. That's bullshit. That's Man, you probably, he loves you more. He loves me. I think I know what happened to pops. You done got in a fight with what him too, didn't you? You sorry? No. You sorry, bastard? You done fought pops? I have not. That's bullshit, Bobby. No, let, hold That's on. Bullshit. Watch this. Pop, come here. Pop, come here. Pop, come here. Nice hat, pops. Let me tell you how. You let me tell you how fucked up this is. Me and Boosted has raced each other a couple times, right? This cocksucker is my pops. Ask Chris who's pitching them the race and who he cheers for. Pops, who you cheer for? No, I'm asking you. Do you know this? Oh, well, I know he cheers for me every time. He goes for Chris more than he goes for his own kids. What's up, Chris? <laughs> What's up, Pops? Chris? I love the hat, man. Chris? I love the hat. Randy Young's there. I that? think Bobby's Pops, already drunk or just stupid. I'm just. Where's no, all the time. Pops, give me the, give, give me the five finger death punch, pops. Where's it at? He said, "Give me the five finger death punch." There thank you go. You. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, all right. Good to talk to you, Bobby. What show have you been filming before someone called you and you muted yourself? What have you been filming? Uh, there's a new show coming out, The uh, List of American or American List, whatever it's going to be called. Oh, pop, get off me. And uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it it's a, a couple cars out the country. Damn it! Oh my God! Um, sorry. Um. So you were there, wasn't you? No. Your car was. Your car was. Um. So it's pretty much a deal that 
it's going to be some of the fastest cars in the country that they all threw together and say, hey, come on, it's not really a cash day's deal. I don't really want to spoil too much of it. But everybody's always calling me a duck. So this season coming up, I kind of proved myself I wasn't no fucking duck. Right. Yeah. I got to race some cool people that I've never got to race before. Um, like people I've always wanted to race, never had a chance to or, or never did. Um, I got to race Ryan Martin, Daddy Dave, Axe Man, um, <clears throat> uh, Birdman, Jason Cantu, Mike Marillo. I mean, some of the people that I've never got a chance to get on side of, I got a chance to get on side of. Um, Trisha and the new zip tie card at the Pro Mod that everybody says is it. Yeah. Man, tell Corey to take a fucking break. Tell him to take a break. Take a fucking break. Tell him to take a break. I'm tired of hearing that shit. And, you know, if he, if you would have told me he was building a lift, I'd say I'd over there beating up old people. As loud as it fucking is. Hey, trying to beat a pen in there. No, y'all over there, y'all got to be beating up some uh, fucking retirement home people or something. As loud as it is, tell him to take a break. Tell him to go drink a beer, smoke a cigarette, and take a break. Scores said if he takes a fucking break, he's going to the fucking house. Well, then go to the house because we tired of hearing that shit. Look at that. This is bullshit in the comment section. They are they are pissed about this noise over here that's going on. Bobby, get your shit straight. What the fuck? The booth is flipping shit. I'm reading these comments. Yeah. For fuck's sake. These people log Gregory in to watch some quality in. entertainment, not listen to Corey pound a pin through a fucking lift. That's all they're hearing. <laughs> I am. <laughs> it is what it is. Fuck. Uh, Has he never put right. a lift up? I'm pretty sure when I put my lift up, I didn't bang a pin in there for 30 minutes. Has he never put a lift up? Like, what in the flying fuck is going on over there? Have you seen his car? Yeah, I've seen it. Why did you hire exactly. him to put the lift up in your shop? I didn't Ben Pack did. Well, fuck. Ben Pack needs to have someone else put that lift up because obviously Corey is fucking that up. He is putting a round pin in the square hole. What the fuck is it's going not, on? It's not a little lift. I don't give a shit if it's a giant lift. You ain't got to bang a pin in the, like that. What's he using, a 20-pound sledge? We're trying to have a conversation. And Corey's over there just fucking, you know, just banging on shit just to bang on it. Yeah, you right there. Thank you. I noticed the noise went away because you're standing here now. No, come back. Come back. Be a part of the he interview. Said, no, come back. Come back. Thank you. You're standing right there. For the remainder of this go. fucking thing, with the awkward oh, fucking look on your face, you stand there and don't make any noise because these people are pissed. Look, some people got work for a living. Hey, man, I don't work all day today. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I work all day. All right, quit. Come here, David. This, this, this is my childhood break. best friend. This is David P. Jones. Hey, buddy, what's up? <laughs> hey, tell him about your movie. Tell him about your movie. What's the name of that movie? We're gonna eat a dolphin. <laughs> All right. Now that, that we're back, it's quiet. Thank God, it's fucking quiet now. All my comments are, are rejoicing. I did that for you guys. I done jumped in Bobby's shit just for y'all. Now he would probably try to beat me up, but I'm below the age limit for him, so he's not gonna beat me up. You're good. almost good. forty. You pushing on that age limit? <laughs> is that the age limit? 40? Eh, 25 ish. 25? That ain't old. That's bullshit. I know it. So. All right. So, so what are we talking about now? I don't got a fucking sidetrack. All right, let's talk about Mega Cash Days. What'd you think about it? What'd, what'd you think about like the double elimination? What'd you think about Nebraska? What'd you think about um, the draws you had? You know, how far you went? Like, what'd you think about all of it? Uh, man, Mega Cash Days was cool. It was different. Um, I loved the aspect of it. I loved the the way they did things, like with the double eliminations. Because, like, I had the absolute worst luck in the world. 
have you ever known me to go past first round in any cash days? Nope, I have not. So that gave me another chance to get put out twice. Um, man, the format of it was great. Uh, some of the cars there couldn't ask for better people. Um, Nebraska sucked. Um, you know, they brought us to a town for a couple weeks that had not really a good food selection. I'm fat. That's my main priority. Um, they didn't really have nothing to do. The people were great. Uh, some of the locals were weird as shit. Some of them were also awesome. Um, you know, we met some cool people there. We met some weird people up there. That's everywhere we go. Um, I did not like the road they chose. Um, I felt like that was favored to somebody else, but, you know, that's neither here or there. Um, because the only thing we've heard was, oh, it's going to be a great con concrete road. You know, people's going to have to go fast. We're like, hell yeah, we got to put some power down. We get there, it's like, oh, this is bullshit. So it might be concrete, but it had grooves, you know, this deep cut in it. I mean. Well, but, but, you know, we didn't know if it was going to be fast or slow, honestly. We just knew it was concrete um, and that it was grooved, similar to Wyoming which Wyoming was where the first uh, America's List, or excuse me, Fastest in America was filmed. So, you know, right. that road got pretty fast uh, until they moved it, right? So the assumption was that the road in Nebraska would be just as fast or faster. And I'll be honest with you, we didn't want, you know, the high, you know, we didn't want someone to have an advantage if they were in the further brackets to race in the same exact spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wouldn't be fair for the first round bracket to race on concrete with no rubber, and then the fourth bracket that's all the way down, you know, 50 racers later have uh, all the rubber down, and then they can make, you know, put all the power down. So that's why I get that we move the road later or not. I get that 100%, but this is a road selection with shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, dude, like, let's be honest. You know, this thing standing behind me or sitting behind me. It's not the fastest car in the country, but, I mean, we have a lot of money tied up in these cars to be racing on some some of these shitty services that we race on. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you, you think others would think about that. But, you know, I get it, street racing. But this has evolved so far from your backwoods street racing to where – Cars now have thousands and thousands of horsepower. You know, people have hundreds of thousands of dollars in these cars. Um, it, it's just, it's a, it's a whole different field now. Yeah. So, now, I don't know about you, you but if I go out there and wide this thing up, I, I can't afford to build a whole new car. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hear you. You know, if I, if I roll my shit, I can't, I can't afford to build another one neither. You know, luckily, when I when I run into stuff, I just do it gracefully and only fuck up a fender or a bumper, stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, right. I'm with you. Um, but what what'd you think about like the double elimination stuff? You know, like what? I thought it was cool. Like, like I said, you know, the double elimination, like you know, all the cash day stuff I've been to ever, I've never went past first round. I've always had bad luck with cash days, uh, even in the Maverick. You know, I. I went about seven or eight cash days to Maverick and never went past first round. Um, so the double elimination gave me a second chance at you know, getting after it. Yeah, for sure. What about uh, – so talking about Nebraska and getting ready for the race, I think you were with us one night. Uh, me and Birdman were trying to test my car, and – Birdman had just done a burnout in the middle of the road and was backing up. And sure enough, here comes a, I think a state trooper down the other side. And man, he like whipped it around, did a, did a donut in the median, all kinds of stuff with his lights on. And we're just sitting there like, ah, shit. And I can remember we were trying to keep you away from the state trooper because you just wanted to like talk shit to him and, <laughs> and mess with him and fuck with him. And they were trying to let James Finney go. So I can remember uh, trying to, like, be the, the in-between and keep you away from them. Well, well, man, like, you know, I was just singing that song. 
You know, I watch next Friday. You can't fuck with the police. Yep, yep, but y'all was getting more aggravated with me at that. Yeah, keep going. Keep going, man. You were sounding good. Yeah. You had good tone. Keep going. He, the the yeah. cop didn't like that too much. The, the little chunky cop loved it. Yeah. Yeah. The one cop loved it that you were talking shit to his buddy. But the one that you were talking shit to, didn't. he was not enjoying that at all. He was well, not the one I was talking shit to, the little, the little chubby one, I was laughing, so he didn't like him. <laughs> so he was waiting for him to get fired. <laughs> yeah, the other guy was like, he was way serious. He was like the type of dude that will write you the parking ticket, whatever, you know, don't use your turn indicator. Like, that was his deal. Like, he was way by the book, right. and you were just steady fucking with him. Well, yeah, he's like, this car should be on the road. I was like, I said, kind of should, you know. And he goes, well, y'all think y'all smart doing this? I said, do you think you smart? And he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, could you make that car do that? And he didn't really like that idea. <laughs> You know, yeah, you know they wrote one. they wrote Finney a ticket. Uh, they wrote Finney a ticket for that, and actually came and found Finney in his hotel later on that night and took the ticket back and like ripped it up. I thought that was pretty cool. So the dude must have got over you talking shit to him. I'm gonna have to fucking get over Francisco Vague on here talking show these comments. Yeah, he's. He's being hard on you right now, man. Vega is being gonna, hard. I'm calling the right deportation now. office on his ass. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, but he's uh, I think he's married to uh, he's he's married into this deal, so I don't think that's gonna work out. It's fake. <laughs> okay. She don't love him. <laughs> okay. So, Bobby. Since you didn't watch Mega Cash Days last night, I'm just going to go through what you missed. Um, you missed some great racing here. I think you missed watching yourself. You raced Anthony. How'd that go? Man, I mean, there, there's no excuse. Anthony beat my ass. I mean, there, like I said, there's no excuse. Um, his car works, dude. I mean, he puts the time in. He puts the he, – he does whatever he's got to do to make his shit work. And, you know, he – he showed my ass up, you know what I mean? The road wasn't that great. I didn't take enough power. He knew what the road was going to take, and he sent that bitch right on down through there, smooth in front of my ass. Yeah. Yeah, his car uh, his car actually works. Um, his car works. That on car some, works really good. Yeah, that, that car works good. Uh, so that was a tough draw I, for you, dude, especially on that section of road. Like, uh, that, was a, that was a tough draw. But... Dude, I've watched that man's car on roads. I said, oh, this son of a bitch is never going to hook and have the damn tires hung fucking a foot and a half in there. And I said, holy fuck. <laughs> and you're over there, you're over there uh, burning the tires off, just smoking them for mosquitoes. You done killed all the mosquitoes, though. That was cool of you. Got rid of all the mosquitoes. Well, I mean, they're area. biting everybody, so I figured I'd take one for the team, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what, yeah, man, we appreciate that. So after your race was Trisha and Jake Blaine, and Jake Blaine got the win on that one. And then probably uh, one huge anticipated race was Axeman and Ryan Martin, and Axeman got the win there. You know, he Axeman has that car rolling, dude, and, uh, you know, it's just amazing. You know, he, he didn't really race on the street too much, and he's turned this car into something that works really well uh, on the right. street. So, Oh yeah, you know, more, that that's that's a fact. And they, they got this little dude that keeps commenting the same shit. Al Smith, the Maverick was the best car you ever had. That is complete bullshit. Let's be real. All right, the Maverick was a hunk of shit when I had it. Let's be honest. This son of a bitch on motor with three spark plug, four spark plug wires off of it would kill that Maverick while the Maverick was on blast. Okay. I, mean, I don't know how you don't understand that. I mean, it is what, yeah. it, is. No. It, is what it is. Uh No, I agree. Uh, last time I saw the Maverick, I would not want to drive that car. Um I feel like it was kind of pieced together a little bit and, you know, not uh, not talking trash on on what you owned or whatever, but I really hope the new owners have 
put some money into the safety side of it and maybe the chassis because that's where it really lacked. Man, they, they cut the whole front end off of it and, and put, put some good shit under where the car is actually safe for her to drive now. For sure, for sure. So I'm gonna tell thank you, you Bobby, the, for addressing you know, that comment. Right. I, I tell you what a lot of people don't understand. Um like with us traveling the way we do and filming these shows, you know, everybody included in all of this, I mean, we uh we have to sacrifice a lot more people think, you know, everybody's out there, oh, y'all living the dream, y'all are uh, racing for a living, y'all, you know, everybody thinks that's the dream. Um, but, you know, people don't realize stuff like, you know, for instance, we was filming the new show that hasn't aired yet. Um, and I think I, I sent you a picture of her. Um, a real good friend of ours, um, and when I say real good, she she was like a sister to me, Angie. Angie. Um, she passed away while we was filming a new show. And the way it's partayed, as you know, we was filming that every night. Trying to get it, you know, under wraps while COVID had us in a, in a pickle. Um. You know, I, I didn't even get a chance to make it to the services. Um, people don't think about all that, though. You know. That's right. Yeah. Um, that's one thing about, uh, you know, like going to Nebraska. You know, you have to almost put your life on hold for three or four weeks um, while you do this stuff because you're stuck up there, like I said, for three or four <laughs> weeks doing this whole deal, filming every night, testing – doing the other stuff they want you to do, you know what I mean? And you can't come back home. So if something like that happens, like what you're talking about, you know, a family member or someone close passes away, like, you know, you kind of have to make the decision there what you're going to do. And, um, Dude, yeah, man, that's, that's a I'm tough call you for what, sure. I'm going to tell you what the roughest part of that was. So my my buddy Kevin Saint, he was like a brother to me because, like, when I tell you there ain't no blood, but we can't get no closer, that that's my family. You know what I'm saying? Um, sure. And uh, like I said, I, I sent y'all a picture. You could post it on here if you want or not. It's her brother, her and her brothers and her dad. Yeah. Um, Go ahead and show the picture, Tom. Her, her biggest. It, that's my dog right there, man. Like. That's my people. That's, that's my family in Virginia. Like, I didn't think I can for them. And, man, that woman right there, she was the biggest Bobby Cody fan in the world, right? She had my back. But she had one person that she was – she she liked a little more than me, I think, but in a whole different way either. She was a Birdman fan. And when I say – when I found this out, I had to raise Birdman that night that she passed. And I didn't know what to think about this, you know? I was like, man, Andy's either going to be riding with me or she's going to be kicking my ass, you know? So, y'all just have to wait to see how that plays out. Um, I might have got a little emotional that night on camera. I did. Sorry. Um, but there, there's a lot of things we, we go through that a lot of people don't, don't see, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Well, you know, I hate to hear that, you know, and I hate to hear that it happened while you were away. Um, so that, that definitely is, you know, that's a bad deal, but, um, oh, yeah. I mean, you've had, you've had issues yourself. Every racer's had, you know, for sure. For sure, man. You just kind of got to put that behind you and do what you got to do uh, is what it all comes down to, honestly. So, but, yep. uh, man, moving on real quick. Let me finish this whole Mega Cash Days thing. Your boy, Jerry Bird, you know, he helped you quite a bit, um, I think, in the later parts of the show. Um, he kind of 
helped you with, uh, I think, suspension tuning, stuff like that. Um, oh, yeah. He raced. That, that, that's actually Hill. my uncle, Darryl and Jerry. Now, your uncle? Like your real uncle? Or you're like yeah. just your uncle? Like, yeah, Darryl and Jerry's my uncles. You know, a lot of people like know real that, uncle. They're mm -hmm. your real uncle. Okay. It depends what day you ask them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Got it. He come over there. Okay. And Jerry says, you know, Jer Jerry's a very unique person. Um, and I'm sure you've noticed that. Jerry has his good days with Jerry and his bad days with Jerry. Jerry has his good conversations with Jerry, has his bad conversations with Jerry. <clears throat> and if I lose... He gets more mad than I do on the way back. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, he come over there and he said, Bobby, he said, if you don't change them motherfucking shots, he said, you're going to lose. He said, come on, motherfucker. And, and he got over there and we started changing shit. And I'm like, what do I need to do? You know, I didn't know. Like, I'm still new to big tires. You know what I mean? He did the small tire shit for a while. So we kind of lost when we go to new, new kind of surfaces with big tires. And, uh, you know, Daryl and Jerry helped me a lot up there, you know, for cash days. I mean, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was just sending the car with what I thought was right. Yeah. No, I could tell your car definitely made changes when they started working on it. So they definitely put you in the right direction. And, you know, they uh, they raced Ken Clark last night, too, and, and were able to get down the – that shitty part of the road and put Ken Clark on the trailer. So, you know, that's saying something. They Dude, definitely know what they're doing. You know what I mean? When when we drew Monza, I was like, man, fuck. I said, this dude's been racing since before I was born. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what am I going to do? This son of a bitch. Like, I was intimidated as fuck. I ain't going to lie to you. And uh, Jerry and Daryl changed the car. And he's like, it's going to go. Just calm down. I'm like, I'm going to turn number two on just in case. I was like, this son of a bitch spins. I want to at least try to, you know, try to run him down. And, uh, boy, when you bang that light, I let go of that button. My hands were shaking. I, my hands were sweating. They were shaking. I was, I didn't know what it was going to do. And I've never turned that much power on on the street. But we turned it on, on out there to where if it spun, when it, I started getting back after it, it would go. Dude, I turned that shit on. And when it come in, I said, oh, motherfucker. Like, it was all over the road. It was skating. It was tire spinning. I grabbed a parachute. And I'm like, I don't even see this motherfucker. I said, I hope I didn't red light. But. No, you did good, man. So. Got him. Uh, yeah, you did. You, you got that W, man. But, real quick, Jerry Burr went on and raced Brody. Ended up losing to Brody. And then JJ and Anthony raced. And JJ got that win. And then Axeman and Larry Larson and Axeman took the win there, and then Cantu and Jake Blaine, Cantu, Cantu took the W. Uh, that was the recap from last night. For everybody watching, next week, uh, for those that don't have Discovery Plus, next week is the finale, the final episode, um, and I will have the winner on the next Tuesday's broadcast. I can't tell you who it is, but he will be on next Tuesday. Um, real quick, Bobby, shipping some beers. You what? I know Let's who it is. I just can't say nothing. Yeah, that's right. You know, you know who it is. But some people that have Discovery Plus already know who wins because Discovery Plus is like a week ahead. So for those that have Discovery Plus, don't ruin it for other people. I've been seeing some of you assholes like this Joey guy. He's posting the winner. Way to be a dick and telling everybody who won. Like, why would you do Everybody's that? Some of people don't have Discovery Plus. Like, why are you ruining it for everybody else just because you've seen it? Like, that doesn't make any sense. You're cool. That's a cool thing to do, I guess. But anyways, if you know who won, if you have Discovery Plus, like, don't ruin it for people that don't have it, haven't seen it, because it's a it's a, going to be an awesome race, an awesome finale. Uh, so please make sure you, uh, make sure you watch. Um, I'm going to shift gears real quick to the flagger, the flagger fail of the week. I've got a video. Let's roll the video. It comes all the way from Texas. It's great. Let's watch it. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Let's see it again. Uh, roll it uh, one more time. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> so, for all y'all <laughs> that want to talk shit about my flagging and say, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I can tell you right now, it may look like I almost did that, but I didn't do that. That did not happen. Hey, but I watched. Do, do you remember Smoke Simone Dillon? Yeah. I watched this motherfucker flag Kai one night and trip over a cone. And when I tell you Kai almost ran him the fuck over, it burned <laughs> his pants when Kai had the bullhorns. He was laying yeah. flat on his back, son. It was bad. Yeah. So, anyways, that can happen in flagging. Thankfully, I never did that. I know some people watching the show hope every week that I've – do my whole back step and I fall down. Like I know that's what they're waiting on, but I, I don't want to ruin it. That doesn't ever happen. Hasn't happened yet, but it probably will happen soon. But anyways, that's the flag or fail of the week. Um, that can happen. I bet if Bobby tries to flag, it will happen something like that. Are you just going to stand there? You're not going to backpedal? You're going to just stand there in one spot and light the light? Well, that's all you got to say? Okay. All right. With that being said, Bobby, Bobby Ducati – Dukaki, Dakoti, give me your shout outs. What's your website for getting merchandise? Who do you have to thank? Give me that real quick and we're going to get out of here. Man, the website's shut down right now. Um, I'm done out of merch. We was waiting on no prep teams kick back off, but man, I got a lot of sponsors, a lot of help that, you know, I really could not do this without. And Doug Solutions, Henson Racing Engines. Um, Suncoast Performance, Billet Specialties, NGK, Phil's Trailer Sales, Race Quip, um, Thompson's Restoration, Mickey Thompson, um, Marty Marillac, Marillac Racing. I mean, without them guys, I mean, I really couldn't do shit, dude. I mean, you know, I got – everybody says QA1 is this and that, but, you know, I got QA1 shocks on this car. Um, on the rear, Adam does a riot. Um he did my front struts. Um, Wolf, man, I mean, there's all kind of people. Like, I can't say enough for Isky. Isky's off the chain. Um, dude comes supports our racing. Um, we got Cam, too. You know, my motor oil and stuff. Will, Williams carburetors. My boy Loopy makes my scoops. Even though I send him to orbit, he writes me little notes like this. Bobby, don't send me into orbit, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just all kind of people, man. Like, I, I, I can't thank them all enough, you know. Um, yeah. My, my mama, she, she does my accountant. Uh, she does all my accountant. paperwork. Okay. You know, okay. I can't even write a fucking check, you know, and she does that shit for me. Um, nice. My, you know, Race Tech Pistons, Total Seal, Piston Rings, King Barons. Um, my boy Jeremy Idol makes all my stickers and stuff. Um, what? Right, can't, leave out, can't, can't leave out royalty lighting. Can't leave out royalty lighting. Got new lights in the car right there. Uh, got another stick yeah. on my car for a buddy of mine that passed away. Races for Donnie Barnes. Um, you know, you actually, you know him. Um, Pops and Aaron, you know, they, they come all over the fucking country with me. You know, they keep me going. Um, I done said my mama, are you fucking deaf? Jesus. <laughs> VP All right, Bobby. You know I me. Mean? All right, Bobby. Yeah, everybody, it sounds man. like you. Sounds like your assistant is feeding you lines to talk. So, I think you got all of them. Look, That's I awesome. appreciate you joining us, man. We gonna get out of here. All right. Don't beat up no old people. Yes, yeah, sir. Don't get banned you ain't off 40 Facebook. Yet. You, it's close. I'm That's safe. Now. I know. Later.